when he used to get paid, he used to put the, the cash in a metal steel bank, which somebody in the family... No, 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 Ma. What, why, who, tell us all about it, Ma. Who built the, who, why did Grandpa tell somebody to, to build the, 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 the... Uncle Al was working in the shipyard. He was working, he was making seal plates and seal. So he's a welder. For the ships. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he handled, so he... Grandpa said to him, I would like you to make me a bank mm -hmm. this thick that nobody could get into. I don't trust the American banks. Mm -hmm. So my pay, my salary, mm -hmm. I'm going to put it in the bank. This was 1943. You know, then you're letting me say things that I don't want to say. Yeah, I know that. But you know this how it's going to go into the safety deposit box. The generations so are going to be gone. Uncle Tony mm -hmm. was buying, he was working in the shipyard too. Hi. Hi. And he was going to buy a house. Mm -hmm. You're giving here. And he, 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 asked, he said, yes, my mother and father, he told him, but I have to pay a big interest. So grandpa, grandpa said to him, don't bother. I have money put away, and I'll lend you the down payment. Was something like three thousand mm -hmm. so dollars. So Grandpa went to get the bank. The, the point of it was cut off with the axe, mm -hmm. and all the money was gone. Mm -hmm. The only one in the family that knew about that was Uncle Al, because mm -hmm. he made the bank for Grandma and Grandma. Mm -hmm. No one knew about it. Mm -hmm. Johnny was your Uncle Johnny was in the service. Mm -hmm. Uncle Tony didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Aunt Camilla knew. She didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. I was maybe a kid. You mean Aunt Camilla or Aunt Annie didn't know about it? I was a kid 14 years old, and Anna was 12 years old. We were both going to high school. Mm -hmm. So hey, the only one take they pointed the finger at had Uncle Al. But they had the key to the house. Mm -hmm. They used to come in and out of the house. Mm -hmm. So Grandma nearly had a nervous breakdown over that money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She nearly had a nervous breakdown because they never had that much money and they were trying to save it, I don't know, for what. Mm -hmm. And when the time came that they needed it, they didn't there. find it was gone. Right. And the, they pointed the finger at Uncle Al. Mm -hmm. And that's, Aunt Camilla knew that Grandma and Grandpa blamed her husband. Mm -hmm. That's Marietta's, mm -hmm. Alfred's, right. and Jimmy's father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, he took the money. Mm -hmm. And Grandma nearly had a nervous breakdown. She was sick over it. Mm -hmm. And how much was 300000 How much was $3,000 worth in those days? A lot. A lot. Yeah, a lot. It's mm -hmm. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And that was the end. Mm -hmm. So they took the keys away from everybody. They mm -hmm. took the keys away from Aunt Camilla, mm -hmm. Uncle Al. Mm -hmm. I had a key because I was living there. So you're right. talking about the keys to the house? Yeah, they took mm -hmm. the keys away. Mm -hmm. And who do they blame? They blame your mother and me. Now, your mother was... Who blamed you and my mother? They, the Creek Towers did. Ah. Mm -hmm. They said that we were the ones living here. But we didn't even know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And Grandma was a sharp woman. Mm -hmm. She said, if I saw my kids buying candy and all kinds of things, mm -hmm. I would ask them, where the heck did you get the money? Mm -hmm. So your mother didn't know anything, and neither did I. Mm -hmm. But they, we were young. Mm -hmm. I was 13, and your mother was 11. What the mm -hmm. hell were we going to do with that money? That's what I was yeah. just thinking. Yeah. We wouldn't even know how to cut it with a tax saw. Yeah. So, Dal, tell me a good story about Uncle Al. Tell me a story about him helping Grandma or Grandpa. About what? Anything. Did he That's do anything nice for them? Well, he was very handy uh -huh. in the house. Uh-huh. So when Grandma... 
my brothers didn't know Uncle Patty, Uncle mm -hmm. Tony. They weren't a handy at all. Mm -hmm. So when Grandma needed something done in the house, mm -hmm. she'd ask Uncle Al. Mm -hmm. But she would pay him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was it. Yeah. Was Uncle Al a hard-working guy? What? Was he a hard-working guy? Did he work hard? He didn't have a steady job. No? So he was out of work a while. How did Aunt Camilla make up with Grandma and Grandpa? How did she make up with him? Yeah, how did she make up with him? She never broke away from him. Well, uh, over the money. I thought that uh, they didn't become angry at each other? No, they didn't. Well. They, they denied it. Mm -hmm. she, he denied it. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Yeah. So Grandpa and Grandma never held a grudge or anything like that. They didn't trust them. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm. Uh, was he working hard then? Who? Uncle Al. Oh, we had opened up a gas station. Uh huh. On the corner of Beeman Avenue. Mm hmm And Richmond Terrace, remember that gas station? Mm hmm Then he opened that gas station. Where he got the money, we don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was just a kid. I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I think it's a good question to ask uh, Al. Talk, ask him to talk about the gas station sometime. And then he lost the gas station anyhow. <laughs> Wasn't he also in uh, with the main deli, Ma? What? Wasn't Uncle Al also involved with the main deli? The deli. Main, the main deli. In Westerly. Oh. Main, a deli. The main deli. Wasn't he with his brother in there? Oh, yeah. He was, uh, his brother bought a deli contestant. Mm hmm. And Al was working at the cashiers. Mm hmm. And his brother Eugene squealed on him, on Uncle Al. Squealed on him? And said that his brother Eugene was young, it was like we were. Mm -hmm. And he squealed on Uncle Al and told his mother that Uncle Al was pilfering from the cash register because he and his brother were <laughs> partners. He wasn't an honest person. Mm -hmm. And his mother, his mother bought him out and she gave the delicatessen to her daughter's husband. Oh. That was it. You know, you shouldn't ask me to do this. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about something good for Aunt Camilla and Aunt Uncle Al. What is it? Tell me a good story about Uncle Al and Aunt Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Uncle Uncle Tony and Aunt Jo. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, Mom. He was henpecked. She was a witch. What about when they got married? Ah, oh, come on, you tell him. I'm not going to tell him. I wasn't there. You know what? If you don't tell it, nobody's going to know. You're not going to be around forever, and the store is not going to, they're going to die. So she was pregnant. Yeah, so? In 1937. Yeah, that so? That was unheard of. Right. Wow. Women didn't screw around with guys. And Chelsea, they used to call her the Bayonne Queen. Why? What are you looking at me for? <laughs> do you mean that she was into politics or that she was a liquor? Or what do you mean? Politics. This guy's a smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> she was a fast was born that way. A uh, okay. Yeah, so she liked to play she liked to like to be socialized. Yeah. So what happened? Oh, what happened yeah. the day they got mar they were getting married, Ma? Oh wow. Is this going where I think it's going? <laughs> Come on, Ma. So the day of the wedding, what happened? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Padla Veloce. The day of the wedding, I was nine years old, uh -huh. and your mother, Aunt Anna, was seven. We went in Josie's house, and in Arlington, Staten Island, and Manitoba. And we were in the living room, and Chelsea was upstairs getting dressed to get married. And this guy that was supposed to drive the limousine arrived. 
And the mother went upstairs and said to Aunt Cho, Aunt Cho, the limousine arrived and Tony's in church. He's waiting to get married. And so she came down and she was crying. She said she didn't want to get married. She did not love Uncle Tony, that she loved the guy that was on a mantelpiece over the, the, the fireplace. Somebody who's already dead? Huh? Somebody, Somebody who's who dead? Somebody who died? No. She, Aunt Josie was getting married that day to Uncle Tony. Right. I know, but who, was, who did she love? Was he alive? The one that she really loved? He was alive. Yeah, where, so it was a picture over the mantelpiece? So she had his picture on the mantelpiece. Okay. And she said, I don't want to get married to him. And she said, it right in front of Grandma. And I remember as plain as day. And they put me and Grandma and Anna in the limousine to the church. And my mother, Grandma was crying the front, on the front pew. And she said, don't marry her, she does not love you. She married him anyhow. And that was the end of the story. So, Ma, do you think, do you think Carol was Uncle Tony's kid? How do I know? I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking you a question, Ma, yes or no? I was only nine years I'm old. I'm just so asking you, do you, th do you think Carol was Uncle Tony's kid? Now maybe looking jo back. Maybe Josie didn't know, all right. but I thought all right. she was. Okay, that's all I'm asking. That's fair enough. How the hell do I know? I don't know, Ma. <laughs> so let me ask you something, Ma. Why was there a bad blood between Aunt Annie and Aunt Camilla? <laughs> what are you looking at me for? And Anna and Anne Camilla did not like each other. Why? Yeah. Because Anne Camilla used to blame Anna for everything. Well, it sounds like, like she blamed you guys for the theft of the money. What else did she blame Mom for? Why hear about Aunt Camilla? I don't seem like a nice she person. Is, well, <laughs> why? Okay, here's the question that he wants to know. Why? Come here. Why did Aunt Camilla? Sit. Why did Aunt Camilla and Vinny's mother not get not like each other? Why? Why did Margie take not let Vinny associate with the family for years? Because Aunt Camilla played a lot of dirt, dirty tricks on Margie. Okay, like Uncle, what? Did you, did, like had, he, he doesn't know. He doesn't Johnny know. He had what? A wrist that was broken. And Uncle Joni had a case going when Vinny was... When Uncle Johnny was dying. Before he died. And Aunt Camilla was mad at Aunt Anna because Aunt Camilla was supposed to have told Margie that... Johnny had a case going, but Aunt Camilla didn't know that Johnny already told Margie that he wanted Margie to tell him to give the baby the money. Right. When Uncle Johnny went to Mount Sinai Hospital, they, Uncle Johnny gave me the bank bill, his bank books and insurance. And he said, darling, did you take it? He said, I trust you. He said, if I give it to Aunt Camilla, he said, I'm never going to see it again. So sure enough, Uncle Johnny gave me all the books and everything. And he said he wanted to be buried with it. And the rest goes to the baby, meaning Vinny. When he, when he came out of the hospital, I gave him everything back. I gave him the bank books and everything. Then he, then Uncle Johnny had Vinny with him all the time. He loved him very dearly. But Aunt Camilla had a fight with Aunt Anna. She said that Aunt Anna told Margie that Vinny had a wrist problem. And Vinny's mother already... You mean Uncle Johnny had a wrist problem? Yeah. And hey, I... Dolly, help me understand something. I'm Vinny's godfather. What? I'm on his baptismal certificate as his godfather. How or why, what prevented or made Margie or uh, Uncle Johnny keep me from being part of Vinny's life? 
I don't know what he said. What did he say? He said, why, if Tommy was Vinny's godfather... Why wasn't I more of Vinny's, in Vinny's life more? You mean after, he, after Uncle Johnny died? Tom? Yeah, I, at any okay. time. At any time. I honestly don't know. You couldn't, have, you couldn't fight the whole family. No, but, but my, I didn't know. I didn't know anything about it. Why wasn't I more in Vinny's life? I don't know. But I think, Ma, what Tommy might be trying to say is, why did Margie take Vinny away from the family after Uncle Patty died? Because even even after Uncle Johnny died, we used to see, you used to see him every once in a while. I used to see him. Right, and Aunt Annie used to see him. Yeah, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying Margie didn't want. Then she didn't want to have anything to do with the family. Why? Because of what happened between... No, but wasn't it also after Uncle Patty died? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Mom... Why did Aunt Camilla say that I wasn't my father's kid? Aunt Camilla? I don't know. She... That's why my mother did what she did. Camilla had the temerity? But I she was fought the whole... She yeah, fought Aunt the whole Aunt Aunt My mother state. doesn't want to say it, but Aunt Camilla was an instigator, and Aunt Camilla was said, when Uncle Patty died and the will was stolen, let me just make sure there's nobody here. <laughs> Aunt Camilla, in order to cut Vinny out of Uncle Patty's estate, they, stole, they apparently stole the will because from what I understand, the, the bulk of Uncle Johnny, Uncle Patty's money- Uncle was, Patty's money. Uncle Patty's money was being left to my mother and your mother. Right. So Aunt Camilla and Uncle Tony ransacked the house, found the will, found that they weren't going to be getting anything, so they conveniently misplaced it. misplaced it. So instead of the will going to two people, it'd be going to, they thought, four people. Uh -huh. So. And then they tried, that's why they tried to say you weren't part of the family. Right. right, because I guess my father had part of the house, and when the house had to be right. sold, yeah. I was gonna, supposed to get my father's So shit. because, because and Uncle... She didn't want that to happen. Half of my shitty aunt. Of father. course, Ma, you know it. The money, you the know money the story. that I got, I had no idea about that, Benny. Was dirt. Was it supposed yeah. to be a father's? Yeah, but I mean, it, back then it wasn't much money, but it was it was cut equally because even right. I even I remember, and I was like twenty years old, that I remember, I remember there was all I kinds of fighting. I stood my head and stacked BBs to make your sister part of our family, and Margie wouldn't do it, and I always held it against her. Now I understand why she didn't. She do wanted it. to keep me, the way my mom explained it, out of the drama. Mm -hmm. She she just. I was eliminated me all together from the Barbados. I didn't tie the two of you together. And I was always pissed at Margie because she would not let me uh, make Tara part of our family. And I, I, all, I used to drive me nuts when she'd show up See, with Tara. I know a lot of it because I used to go to the, the, the lawyer with her. Mm -hmm. So I heard a lot as I was growing now up. Now I understand. I did not know Camilla did And Dittle. she also felt she kept me away from everyone else because she felt Ann Dolly and Aunt Anna didn't but that, step but up that to was, the plate. But that wasn't the case. Right. Because but even, like, even, she didn't know even, that. Even she I remember. everyone was complicit in it. Yeah, because so even she, I remember, I can't remember, I even remember, you know, I remember my mother talking to your mother's lawyer who was handling your aspect of the estate. And it was, you know, my mother didn't have a problem because my mother and Aunt Annie accepted you as Uncle John, as, as your father's child, whereas Aunt Camilla and Uncle Tony didn't. So the whole gist of the issue was that Aunt Camilla and Uncle Tony stole, oh, stole the will, ransacked the house. That's why, that's why Al and Marietta and them all have all the family documents, because they ransacked the house. And even when Uncle Patty was dying, or after Uncle Patty died, Aunt Camilla had medicine from Uncle Patty. And I remember because I used to help out Uncle Patty, I used to take Uncle Patty to the doctor, I used to take him to the store, and Uncle Patty used to, com used to complain. He used to say that Al used to charge him. When, Al, when Uncle Patty would ask him questions about cancer or whatever, Al would charge him because- A doctor's fee. A doctor's fee because Uncle Al, Uncle Have Al- Have you ever asked Al about that? You know what, they all, 
I don't. Rem I don't even remember uh, Uncle Tony and Aunt Camilla. No. I remember. Well, I mean, Uncle they Patty, didn't. Want, they didn't want to have any. I remember Patty. when your father was dying. He had a barbecue at the house on Elm Street, and I remember your mom and Hank were there. I was there with my mother, and your father, your mother, and you, and that Tara was there as well. But Aunt Camilla and Uncle Tony. They never wanted to have anything to do with you. That's, you know, I know that. She yeah. was a witch. Is this Tara and you have what the same father? What about the time the same father? they were having a barbecue in the backyard? Well, my father accepted her as his daughter. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at all the pictures that, that my mom has. I mean, you want to I take, have, I have pictures. Well, you want to take a look at them. They're here. Also, I remember the last time you were here, you took pictures of your mom and a family, but you said afterwards that they didn't come out or something. We were remember. taking pictures of oh, the um, on photo, the photo album. album, yeah. Right, and then, oh, yeah. And then he said, the and, and then he said later they, on, they came out. Uh, they came out. Right I got them here. If you okay. want to, if you want to look at them, I do later. Okay. But, uh, or allow me to take the album. And I'll get a copy. No, I don't. I don't. Not a, take the pictures. My mother, yeah. she gets she gets upset if I take them here. All right. Mm -hmm. I did not know that, Aunt darling. What? That Camilla was. Responsible for my not being part of Vinny's life. I did not know that. I would have been all up in her face. I got to tell you, Vinny, I apologize for that. Not your fault. It's not, out of, it's not in your control. <laughs> wow. I had no idea. I really had I don't no hold idea. any grudges. And I, I got to tell you, I was angry at your mother because she would not let me make Tara part of this family. She just not, would not have anything to do with me. My mother was bitter. Mm. I understand now why she was bitter. I understand now why she was bitter. Okay, Ma, let's talk about something good. Let's talk about you, you taking a train out to Oklahoma to see Aunt Annie, Tommy, and Jimmy. I took a train out to Oklahoma City. Right. He was only three, Benny was in Bernie, he was only three years old. Right. And he was talking to the people that were sitting in the back of us or in the front. And he was saying, I, 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 my mommy's always fighting with my daddy. <laughs> and he's telling, giving them all the business. <laughs> and then Tommy and Jimmy were at the train, and they picked us up. Do you remember that, Tom? No. no. I remember you being there. I, remember, I got a memory of you being in the kitchen with my mother. But other than that, I don't remember it. I never fought with your mother. I didn't say you fought with her. Sure you did. I remember you fighting with Aunt Annie. Oh yeah, you fought with I remember, Aunt I remember Aunt Annie. You, you telling Aunt Somebody Annie, this. I, remember you, I remember you arguing with Aunt Annie about stopping smoking and she told you to shut up or leave the house. Oh, oh yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> 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 you fought with my mother about Bernie. Everybody tried to get him. My mother was trying to get you to do something about Bernie and you got angry at her. And you left that apartment. I remember that after I came back from the Marines. I was in the living room when you, Mom, were in the kitchen arguing. About my father or my brother? Your brother. Oh. Mm -hmm. Arguing about your, about your son. And you were you didn't want to do what my mother was telling you. My mother was telling you, well, then stop complaining to me. I forgot about it. Well, I'm sure you did. There was never any hard feelings between you and my mother. But the, don't, you can't say you didn't fight with my mom. You used to fight with my mom all the time. Someone's fight. We fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We never say mad. Exactly. No. No. Exactly. No. We, we tell each other. We're about to argue, siblings. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We'll say our best. But, but, but tell us, what about what happened when you went out to Oklahoma? Did you have a good time? How long was the train? And Ida was very good to me. Yeah. And they were very good to Jim and Vinny. Bernie. Bernie. Right. And Tom used to, and Jim used to play with Bernie. How long were you out there for? About a month. Oh, wow. It was nice out there. Then but, but that was, the, you had to take the train out there, and the train was probably took a couple days. And then Uncle Matt came home, and he took us to the zoo. Yeah. And he was holding Bernie. Was that in Oklahoma or St. Louis? Oklahoma. Vinny wasn't born yet? Huh? Vinny wasn't born yet? He was born. No, I wasn't. Was he, was he, he was born when he was old? old? You're talking about Bernie, Ma. Bernie was oh, three. Oh, you weren't born. Right. Did you like did you, that? Did you ever come out to St. Louis with me? Not with you. I was out there plenty of times when I was in college. Oh. 
Yeah, did you like my grandfather? What was he like? I didn't know him at all. That was it. But they want to know about their like? grandfather. What did you like? like Mac? Mac, what was Mac like? He was handsome. <laughs> he always said that. That's, where, that's where Tommy gets his good looks from. I know. Yeah. Dirty blonde hair. That's where, Tommy, that's where Tommy's hair you comes from. It took me a second to realize you were talking about my father. He <laughs> was so good looking here for your grandfather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was he nice? Good. And then he was very good to my mother and father. Uh-huh. They loved him. But what about to Anne? Was he good to Anne? His wife? Yes. Now, tell the truth. Oh, yes. He was a good man that went wrong, is what he was. Yes. He was a good man who did something that he was very ashamed of, allowed the guilt to eat him alive, mm -hmm. and ended up hurting my mom. And that's why we came back to the East Coast. He never thought he'd get caught. I agree. I agree. He never thought he'd get caught. But having gotten caught and having done what he, what he did was have an affair and catch a venereal disease and give it to my mother. Uh, that made my mother livid. Uh, and she still wasn't ready to leave him. But the guilt of trying to make up and my mother not allowing him to make up to her drove him nuts mm -hmm. to the point that she, he was physically abusive to my mother. Uh, yeah. And that's when we came back to the East Coast. So, and I'll tell you the same thing I've told everybody else. The last time I saw my father, I was standing with a baseball bat in my hands and he was taking a shot at my mother. And that's the next day we were on the train to the East Coast. So, and that's the last I ever really had anything to do with my father. How old were you then? I don't know, Vinny. I really don't know. Guessing, I would say I was 15. That's what I guess. Mm -hmm. and what was she like when you were 15? Was she outspoken? Oh, yeah. She was a strong woman. She was, a dedic she was dedicated to my father. Uh, she was a typical housewife. Uh, she, I don't even know if she knew how to balance a checkbook until we came back to the East Coast, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. My father used to do everything. Uh, and that was the kind of household that we had. Uh, but my mother, you know, stepped up when we got back to the East Coast. You know, she learned to do everything she for herself work. and, you know, find a job and all that good stuff. Now, having uh, said all this, my father found another woman whose oldest son was named James, whose youngest son was named Thomas. Wow. My father had made me co-executor of his estate, and when he passed away in my late 20s, and I don't remember specifically uh, when it was when he passed away, but I did, I did all this with the attorney over the phone, and that's how I found out about, out about this. His then wife, my, as you know, your grandmother was five foot three, black hair, blue eyes. His then wife was about five three, five four, black hair, blue eyes. His, like I said, his oldest son was named James, and his youngest adopted son was named Thomas. And um, the irony of all of that really struck home with me, because, like I said, I was in my late twenties, and I never understood why, when I got married. Oh, well, I beg your pardon. When I joined the Marines, I reached out to my father on the basis of seeing or stopping at a truck stop on the New Jersey okay. Turnpike and leaving a message with a roadway truck driver, right? knowing that the kind of network that they have. I just, you know, tell him, tell Delmar McAllister that his son Tom McAllister is getting, going in the Marines. Never heard from him. Then when I got out of the Marines and got married, I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Never heard from him. So I, I didn't bother with him for all that time. Mm -hmm. And then when this happened, when he passed away, I was just you know, struck with the irony of the whole thing. You know? And Were you surprised that your father left you as the executor? Yeah, I was, yeah. And um, all I really before? did, we were co I was co-executors with his oldest adopted son. Okay. And all I really did was sign some papers and look at some pictures and, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And But it really, you know, the irony made me sad because my sure. father never never responded to me or anything right. like that. Now, my brother, your father, was very, very angry at my father. Justifiably so. I mean, you know, at the time, um, your father worshipped the ground my father walked on. I mean, we were doing lots of things together. We were hunting together. We were fishing together. All this good stuff. And he simply did something that was wrong, and the guilt of trying to make up for that drove 
my mother, my mother and him apart. And it led him to try to hurt my mom because she would not take him back. Right. Uh, so, uh, life is a bitch. <laughs> Life's a bitch and then you die. Pretty much. What did you think of Hank? I loved him. I mean, in terms of, all I remember about my father was his discipline, I mean, being a disciplinarian. Even though he taught me to use a bow, even though he taught me to hunt, he taught me to fish, the only thing I really think about is his discipline and how he used to use, lose his temper with me. And looking back on it, Aunt Dolly and Mom's version of the stories were true. Mm -hmm. right? It's just that I was a kid. From my perspective as a kid, he was being overly abusive because hitting me with a wrench in the head was not a good thing. Far too much. But, yeah, you know, <laughs> it wasn't as if you went, wham, you know, right. you know boom. <laughs> but still, um, I did not have fond memories of my father. Uh, your, fa your father did. Uh, uh, your father loved our father mm -hmm. very much. And it really hurt him yeah. when mom and I, when mom, and because he knew it was dad's fault. Yeah. He, knew, he, knew yeah, that sure. my, he knew it was dad's fault. And at one time that my father came to see my brother and I, when we were with Grandma Barbados, um, there wasn't a whole hell of a lot he had to say. He had two fishing rods. <laughs> you know, he went, here, here, hello, how you doing, goodbye. That was, you know, that was the extent of the visit. Mm -hmm. And my brother was very angry about that. Yeah. But, you know, your father sure. was very angry about yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think my father personally embraced Pop Hank a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He worshipped the ground Absolutely. Hank walked on. Yeah. And I loved him. I loved the man. I mean, yeah. I got to tell you. When I ran away from home, he was the one who convinced me to come back home. Yeah. You know, you know when I told my mother to go fly a kite and walk, left home, um, he convinced me to come back. And it seemed like he was wise beyond his years. Yeah. He didn't have yeah. the education mm -hmm. to help project what he was feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I felt like, just from what I remember. And I had a chip as great as a whole outdoors on my shoulder when we came back to the East Coast because. I'm not patting myself on the back down, but I had a, a really bright future in, sure. college, in high school football and college football. Um, and I really resented my father for having split us up. Yeah. I, I really did. But then when I was ready to join the Marine Corps, I would gotten over that. And I wanted my father to know that I was going into the Marines. And he didn't respond to me. That pissed me off. Then when I got married and he didn't respond to me, that pissed me off. So yeah. as far as I was concerned, we were done. I'd made as many efforts as I was going to. And again, the irony of what happened when he passed away uh, really struck home. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really struck home. And I never discussed it with Jim, because I didn't want Jim to feel bad. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. And I didn't want Jim to realize just how far my father had gone in terms of mimicking what he already yeah, had. Right. Mm -hmm. What he lost and gave mm -hmm. away. Yeah. What was it like move, moving back to Staten Island, moving into Grandma's house? Uh, Frankly, a pain in the ass. <laughs> Why? I was a, I was a, um, an adult. How old were you? Uh, I was all of uh, 20. No, you were you, 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 you were 20 when you moved 20. back to Staten Island? Yeah, I was 20. Okay, wow. When I got out of the Marines, I was 20. But you, you lived in Staten Island before you went in the Marines? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. But you said moving back in with... No, no, no. When you moved back in, when you came from well, Grandma Oklahoma. Barbado? Yes, 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 uh, yes. We loved it. Grandma Barbado, you know, treated us like we were gold. Treated us as best as we've ever been treated in our lives. Grandma Barbado used to dote on us. Um, she used to be concerned about everything that we did. The one time I got into a fight and came home bloody, she was... Uh, uh, all up in arms and wanted to know who had done it and all this good stuff. Uh, she was going to go after them? And I didn't tell her I was the one that started it. She's the one that, that had the gun in the house, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. She's, yeah. The, she's the one in the pictures from St. Louis. Did she, did she go out? There's, I have yeah, the pictures. They, uh, grandma, grandma, did Grandma and Grandpa go out to the Midwest to see Tommy and, and Annie? They what? Didn't Grandma and Grandpa go out to the Midwest to see Tommy, Jimmy, and Aunt Annie? Yes. Did they like it out there? Grandpa couldn't get over the many miles he had, they had to travel, all the farms and everything that they passed. He loved it. How did they do it? By train? What is it? Did they travel by train or did they travel by bus? 
Your father drove them. Oh, so he drove them from Staten Island out to where we lived in uh, Oklahoma? Yeah, he drove them back. Wow, that uh, was a call. That's a drive. Uh, especially back then. Yeah. yeah. You know, there was, no, there was no interstate. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can, what? That's a lot of stopping your ass, too. In the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't hear it. He was very brave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you liked living with Grandma when you first came from Grandma Oklahoma? Grandma Barbeo, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like, what about with, I couldn't do anything wrong. What about with uh, Uncle Johnny and Uncle Patty? They were good to me. I mean, Uncle Patty was stoic. Uncle Patty was uh, more of a disciplinarian than Uncle Johnny was. But Uncle Johnny took me to bars. You know, I mean, <laughs> at 15 or 16. What the, thing. <laughs> do you think? Do you think Uncle Patty lightened up after Grandma died? Lightened up? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. Oh. Uh, what I think is he became less concerned about taking care of Grandma. He no longer had the responsibility of looking after Grandma. If there was anything that Johnny and Patty ever fought about, it was taking care of Grandma. And uh, once Grandma was gone, uh, that responsibility, as far as Patty was concerned, was gone. So while he was more reclusive, than he had been before. He was less angry. You think Johnny. he was reclusive? Uncle Patty? Uncle he never, you know, he never said, hey, come on, I'll take you to the Oh, okay. He never said, uh, come on, we'll go out and play some catch. He never, uh, he would come home, he would have dinner, he would be... He would come home, he would have dinner, uh, he would, you know, be nice over dinner, he would watch his TV programs, and then he would go to his bedroom. And there wasn't a whole hell of a lot of uh, intercourse going on. I'm all right. Are you sure? Yeah. Was it you that oh, found a lot, of, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of porn in Uncle Patty's, <laughs> Uncle Patty's room? I don't remember finding a lot I of porn. So I know Patty's somebody room. was saying they found a bunch of porn in Uncle Patty's room. Uh, mm. Hey. Did Uncle you ever get married? Uncle Pat? Yeah. Not to our knowledge. No. Tommy, want to hear the latest? Uncle Patty had an insurance policy with a mutual of Omaha. And I remember him paying for that insurance policy when I was 10 or 11 years old. Mm -hmm. He always paid it. Mm -hmm. So when he died, that insurance policy never came up. Mm -hmm. Now, I was the only girl left. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, Later on, about 20 years later, mm -hmm. I happened to be over Jimmy's house and Al was there, the doctor. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about what happened to the estate. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, I said, you know, oh, I used to ask Ann Camilla about that. I said, you ever find that insurance policy from the Mutual of Omaha? I said, no. And I used to take her in my car and everything. So I was up, stayed over Jimmy's house one, one mm -hmm. weekend, and we were talking about the estate. And they were telling me, you should have called a lawyer. I said, I had nobody on my side. Mm -hmm. I had a sick child. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, I, I said to Al, I said, you know, there was an insurance policy by, from the Mutual of Omaha that Patty was paying. Mm -hmm. And I said, I wonder what happened to it. Mm -hmm. So Al was innocent. He says, I have, I have the redeemed policy in my Marietta and then gave it to me to put it away. I said, redeemed. He said, yeah, didn't you get the money? He said that to me. I said, no, I never got it. What happened, either Ann Cho or Ann Camilla forged my handwriting and they, got, they redeemed that mutual of Omaha and got the money. Who do you who do you think took it, Ma? Why? Who do you which one do you think did it? Which which one do you think did it? The both no, of them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. They were the ones that then Jimmy was supposed to go up there and he said, I'm going up and check to see what's going on. They must have found the well. My brother? They must have No. Jimmy never admitted Jimmy, it. Jimmy Crutello. Oh, okay. But I guess he he felt bad, he wanted to cover up for his mother. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to wake everything up. Mm -hmm. He said, Aunt Dolly, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Nothing was found. Mm -hmm. so, but they had the will on everything. Marietta, Jimmy, and Al are siblings. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And they had a brother named Frankie. I can't even. Who, they had a brother saying. Frankie who died sure about 35 years Jimmy ago of AIDS. An hour also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. She and you know if they were cousins and your father you know, was in, in siblings, fairness, because they were no. brothers and sisters. John. No, no, they're not. They weren't. They were cousins. In fairness. Father Patty never had children. No. Not that anybody knows. <laughs> in fairness, we have a videography there. Yes. All right. We have questions. We'll have, we'll have, we'll have questions for you soon enough. Tell us they're all. I agree. There's <laughs> <There's laughs> thousands of them. Um, Aunt Camilla took care of Frankie from the time he became bedridden until the time he died. Sure. She deserves credit for that. Of course. Yeah. You know, why? Why? You know, he he was born that way. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. why? Now, why I don't know why they denied it. I don't know why they didn't accept it. Probably because at that time, it wasn't okay to say my kid is gay or... No, well, and again, yeah, we're talking about Uncle right. Al. And 35 yeah. years ago, it's a we're different story. It's a different story right. today. You know, who cares if somebody's right. gay or whatever? But Nobody cares. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that Aunt Camilla took care of Frankie from the moment he became bedridden until the moment he died. And that was not a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. That was not a fun thing to do. Was they, 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 they redeemed. Mm -hmm. Uncle Connie and Aunt Camilla, they redeemed that insurance policy. I was beneficiary. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they must I'm have balanced. Uh, I'm balanced. Camilla was pretty much me, you know. <laughs> I don't care. It was so many years ago. Yeah. Sure, you book, but she talks about it all the time, like it's like it was yesterday. How old was this she? When, was was Camilla when she passed away? Was she ninety? She was ninety. Yeah, she died like seven years ago. Okay. Mm. So she would have been ninety-seven. Uncle Patty. Jimmy. Uncle Patty would have been over a hundred. Uncle Patty was born in what? Nineteen seventeen, nineteen eighteen. Nineteen eighteen. Okay. Wow. Uncle Pat. Uncle John. Uncle Tony was born in nineteen sixteen. Mm. Well, now you got me really curious when you said you had hundreds of questions. I have a question about my father, because you know him yeah. and I. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. He's had a, a rocky yeah. road. Ma, yeah. tell, tell us about Jimmy, Jimmy McAllister playing Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. 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 I, wanted to, I want to say this before I forget. Jimmy McAllister. Oh, God. I'm thinking. Tell, tell us about Jimmy New Year's Eve. or Jimmy McAllister? Jimmy Cattell. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Cattell said they were searching through the house and he found $17,000 and he gave it to Uncle Tony, he gave it to Uncle Tony. Mm -hmm. Uncle Tony put it in his pocket and forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Did, now that was thirty-five. That was thirty-five, that that was 35 years ago. I would ago. not forget about seventeen. Well, that was thirty-five years ago. So that was that was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That's what was Uncle Tom, Uncle Patty had. Then there was a Foot Locker. The Patty used to tell me he when I, when Vinny went away to college, I needed this Foot Locker, and and Uncle Patty said to me, Dolly, I can't give it to you. I have very important things in there, and he used to tell me about. The yeah, ounce gold, mm -hmm. gold nuggets mm -hmm. he used to buy. Mm -hmm. So when we were up the attic, your mother, me, and Camilla, and Uncle Tony, your mother went into the closet because mm -hmm. she we knew the house, mm -hmm. and she saw some two by fours covering the Foot Locker, mm -hmm. and they pulled it out. And she said to Uncle Tony, "Are we going to open it?" Mm -hmm. He said, no, later on. He said, we'll open it later on. We never saw it. I questioned him about that. He says, there was bocce balls in that. Mm -hmm. So when and I uncle, say and uncle, Jack, uncle, and uncle Patty was a big bocce player. <laughs> yeah, right. Vinny, what? when I say Jack, when he's just as much as a thief as him. But I told you, Ma, when Uncle Tony, the, the, the house, their house was sold, you should have told... Johnny and Carol, there was things in that house that belonged to you that you'd like them, but you didn't say you didn't say anything because of your son. Right? Did I not say that? Whatever. Yeah. Did I not say that? Yes or no? I was. Yes. Did I not? Yes. Okay. I was tired of fighting. Mm -hmm. I had nobody on my side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the feud between our respective aunts and your mother and my mother yep. went on for years. Really 15 on and years. Well. 
I always thought, even when I was a little kid, and when you first got married, I was like eight or nine years old, mm -hmm. that it was strange that Al, Marietta, didn't go to your wedding. <laughs> right. Uh, and they were adults. Mm -hmm. And years later, I would say to my mother, you know, if my mother told me, I can't do this, can't do that, I'd laugh in her face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then, you know, you didn't... I cannot sit here and say that an invitation was sent to them, but there was no reason for me not to well, say that. Well, I'm just, I was, was I'm saying yeah. that <laughs> even, when, even when you got married the second time, you didn't go to your wedding. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think it meant it's it one thing, a bit worse, you know, <laughs> outside, <laughs> Outside of each other now I'm because you've been. There. Well, I know, I know that, yes. All the cousins, uh, you've been the focal like, point. No, I, I know that, yes, yes. Really I, I take credit for that. You should. Yes, you should. I, I do. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm such a great person. Yeah, you are. Yes, <laughs> yes. absolutely. It's a good thing that you've done. You know, you got some really good black marks with the God there, kid. Why not? Yeah. Um, but I even remember the second time you got married because that was right after Uncle Patty died. Mm -hmm. That. And they were all like in their late 20s, yeah, 30s, right. they, 30 they years old, them. and they didn't yeah. go again. Yeah. And I can actually here and tell you that I specifically invited them. I can't do that, because I don't remember. It's Uncle Patty. There was no reason for me not to invite them. He's where my father is. Yep. Is he close to where my father is? I don't know, you got to no. ask my mom. Well, that was, well, I think my, my father's in the veteran no, section. No, he never had a house. He's in the veteran section. I know what he's He never had a significant other, but to my knowledge, he was not. Who? Yeah, Fuck I know that. my father's in the veteran no. section. Just yeah. never settled down. He's, uh, I heard... Where's, and where's Uncle yeah. Patty? He's in the I heard he, uh, uh, he caught something uh, when he was young. Well, I, I, like when you first come in? That, yeah. you couldn't I never heard that. Well, never, never get rid of. Look him and then I also heard that he was engaged. I have not heard that either. Uh, was was Uncle Patty ever engaged? Engaged? Uncle Patty. Yes. Okay. Ah, what happened? She died. Oh, oh, yeah, wow. No wonder he was so. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah. What, when you yeah. and Uncle Patty die? 1982. You know, I thought Tommy, to see my Jimmy's dad. very yeah. honest. He's, Uncle yeah. Patty was Jimmy a good guy. Jerry yeah. mm -hmm. He's very honest. I remember him. He was, you know, he, had a, he was very gruff, but he was a he good guy. I believe in that. I don't remember it. Especially, you know, he especially as he started getting older. Mm -hmm. right, I, I remember... So like Christmas very, time, like, a couple couple perfect. years, my mother would have Christmas like parties. Want to push not to be that. Wait, wait, mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I remember a Christmas party that my mother had, where your father was there, you were there, Uncle Patty was there, the whole family was there. I think you you were probably with the Aellos, mm -hmm. but I remember Uncle Patty got lit, and Uncle they used to all like to drink. I never saw Uncle Patty. Oh, they used to. Mm -hmm. You know, if you remember the parties that they would have, like bat, way back in the day, mm -hmm. it wasn't like. Everybody drinking Diet Coke. No. So it was just like yeah. it was like a couple yeah. ca couple yeah. cases of beer, and then ju just drinking rock gut whiskey and yeah, Jim Bean and, uh, and you know what was yeah. that? Uh, the Fleischmann's. Yeah, Fleischmann's. Fleischmann's. That's, yeah, absolutely. And they would just go ahead. through it. And I remember Uncle Patty got they all got fired up, and Uncle Patty got into a bad argument. I don't know. I think with your father, and even with Hank, mm -hmm. and Hank was trying to defuse the situation. Mm -hmm. That night. And it, I think it was just something about work. Well, Uncle John and Uncle Patty fought all the time. I mean, they fought yeah. about everything. Yeah. Especially Grandma. Yeah. Yeah. He but I, Uncle Pat yeah, thought that him. Uncle Johnny was taking advantage of Grandma and no. wasn't taking care of her. that good? Uh, Uncle John said, you know, Grandma and I are, Mom and I are fine. <laughs> you know? And Grandma would always tell Patty, shut your mouth. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I think to a certain, Uncle Pat, your father, was more interested in having a good time, whereas Uncle Patty was much more responsible. Yeah, and that's that's that's, that's always been a that's always been a big issue <laughs> with my mother and Bernie and me. Yeah. I've always given my mother money, yeah. even when I wasn't living there. Whereas Bernie's lived there for free, and I felt, you know, what the hell? I'm not I'm not I'm giving her money, and it's going to subsidize his lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. So I could see Uncle Patty, but I. But it was just, I just remember Uncle Patty, when he used to get drunk, yeah. he used to, he was some, usually a happy drunk because he used yeah. to talk about stories from the 1930s. The, the best story I can tell you about Uncle Pat was the first time that I got drunk with Uncle Pat, Uncle John, and Hank. And that was playing Pinochle in Grandma Barbado's kitchen. And John got a, a gallon of wine from downstairs. Now, I'm not going to say it was what Grandpa had made, 
but it was downstairs. And he brought it up. <laughs> And I remember having a few drinks, and I was sitting, remember the radiator right underneath the window? I was sitting on that side of the table. Patty was over by the refrigerator side, and Hank and I were partners. Patty was over by the refrigerator side, Uncle Johnny was on the other end by the sink, and um, uh, Hank was sitting by the stove, and I sat by the radiator. Well, after about three glasses of this wine, I started feeling dizzy. Right? And they're all having a good time at my expense. You know, they're, all, they're all teasing me, all that good stuff. And so I stood up and I passed out. And <laughs> when I came to, the person who was holding my head was Uncle Pat when I was, when I was well, getting sick in the toilet. I remember Eddie uh, Kaminsky, little yeah, Eddie, sure. he, had his commu he had his baptism. It was in, it was in Bayonne. Right. And Uncle Patty was feeding me drinks, and I was like 13 or 14. And I, you know, I, I got a little loaded. Yeah. And you were there. Yeah. And you took me outside and made me just like stand in like some cold weather or something until I got so you up. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember that. I don't remember I, that. I, I have a, a shitty I memory. I have a good memory. I have, I have a shitty memory. I really do. Intentionally, I think. I think part of my psychology of avoiding uh, all that nonsense is, you know, it's just, yeah. Hmm. I remember the holidays the most. I want to tell you something about your father. A big friend? I want to tell you something about your father. Who? Tommy's father or, or Anne Marie's Mary, father? Anne Marie's father. Okay, tell us about Jimmy. All right. One day, one Christmas Eve, I was over at your mother's house across the street. Do you remember that house? No. Which one no, was it? You mean on Elm Street? No, on Elm, Elm Street. Street. On Elm Street. Yeah, on Elm Street. Right. So he was only about nine or ten years old. How old were you? Uh, this is at Grandma's house. Yeah. Yeah, no. Grandma Barbada. When, you came in the house. We the street where my friend Joni lived. It was Christmas oh. Eve. Okay. And Jimmy was over the house. He came over the house. And you walked in. You were there. Yeah. Or you walked in. I don't remember. And Jimmy came dressed up like That Santa. was Grandma's house. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy. Grandma Barbado's house. Yeah. Yeah, so Jimmy and Jimmy was, Jimmy was dressed up as Santa Claus because he was working at the place on Richmond Avenue. Yeah, Dots. Yeah, so he, he, you, he, you thought he was Santa Claus. For about five seconds. <laughs> yeah. So then he saw, he saw your father's shoes. He said, you're not Santa Claus, you're Jimmy. You know, look at your shoes. I'll never forget that. But your fa I remember your father took me fishing the first time I ever went fishing. I think I was like about six years old, and I think you were overseas at the time. And we went to Clove Lakes. Okay, I remember that. And uh, we caught some carp there. And we, went, we walked from Clove Lakes to Grandma Barbado's house carrying the carp. <laughs> and and Jimmy, Jimmy cuts it up, and he wanted, I don't know, he wanted somebody to cook them for dinner. And carp is like the nastiest fruit. Yeah, right. But Jimmy was a great, he was, you know, I always remember that. Jimmy took me fishing yeah. the first time. Mm -hmm. He took me fishing a couple times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, he was a great, he, you know, he was, a, he was a good guy. And, and I remember you when, I think when Aunt Camilla first moved into the house on Sheridan Avenue. Mm -hmm. Remember they used to have the Christmas parties? Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I can't, I don't remember how old you are, but I was probably like about five years old mm -hmm. and you were, you were still in high school. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were going, but the family was walking from Aunt Camilla's house to my mother's house. I got a big recollection And you, of that. you had me on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. I got a big recollection of that, walking from here to Aunt, Aunt Camilla's house. Do you remember walking that, Mom? from Aunt Dolly's house to Aunt Camilla's house. Tommy yeah. had me on his shoulders. You are? Tommy we were Carrick. walking from your house to Aunt Camilla's house, and I had Vinny on my shoulders. Do you remember that? Vinny. You, Vinny, my mom, me, that's all I remember. Maybe Bernie was there, maybe Hank was there, I don't remember. But we had walked from your house to Aunt Camilla's new house, and I remember having Vinny on my shoulders. Gave him good practice for when he was humping a pack. <laughs> like a couple, we couple years later. Michelle, I think was Michelle was a baby, so I think we were still in Staten Island. I think you had gone off to the Marines or something because we were all at Grandma's house, and you were giving us pictures of Vinny in the service. I, I he must have graduated or had done something. It was a holiday. Oh, yes, probably. 
Probably when you graduated OCS. Or maybe when I was in Okinawa or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think for, I think when I was like between 10 and 20, we didn't see much of you because you were, yeah, I was, you were enlisted, you were always a cousin Vinny that we never got to see. Yes. <laughs> um, one adventure or another. Yeah, yeah. And we were here, all these exciting things you were doing, and I remember looking at my brother like, what are we doing in freaking Staten Island? Like, come on. <laughs> Ma, why did you hate me? Why did you hate it so much that I went in the Marines? Because I didn't want you to go to war. Yeah. He was in Vietnam. Right. How come? But how come you hated when I went in the Marines? I didn't like the idea. Why? You don't want to know something about him? I'll tell you. He's too much of a Marine now. He never outgrew it. <laughs> Marine, right? Marine, right? Yeah. Well, I had somebody stop me coming out of a restaurant yesterday before I got on the plane. I stopped for a breakfast at a local restaurant in Tucson. And I had my cover on. And, you know, of course, thank you for your service. And I was, thank you for recognizing it. And I was about to go on. He said, uh, they say that once a Marine, always a Marine. And I said, well, yeah, we get That's pretty well drummed into us. <laughs> it's true. We do get pretty well Well, what, what, what did you call that, the thing you were wearing on your head? My cover. Okay. You know what a cover is, Ma? A cover is a hat. So he hasn't been in the Marines in f almost 50 years, and he still calls it a cover instead of a hat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it stays with you. <laughs> Once it gets always into you. a Marine. Yeah, it gets drummed into you. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes he expects me to return. Mm -hmm. Now, Ma, I went to OC now when I went to OCS, I promised you I it was just a summer job, right? When I went to OCS, I promised you it was just a summer job, right? And then, like two weeks before I was being commissioned, I told you I was going in the Marines. And weren't you mad? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? He went in the Marines. No, what did you do? Did you go in the Marines? Did you have a fight? Did you yell at him? She was very uh, extremely upset, and I remember she was ironing clothes uh -huh. downstairs. And I had known I was going in the Marines for, for Did months. Did my mother ever tell you why I didn't go to OCS? You, your mother why? Did my mother ever tell you why I did not go to OCS? Why? No, did she tell you? Did no. she ever tell you? They offered me OCS. I was only 18, and they offered me OCS as I had re-upped for another two years above the four I had. And then when I turned 20, quote-unquote, I'd go to OCS. I called Mom. And I said, hey, Mom, they offered me OCS. They want me to re-up for another two years. You re-up, and I'll disown you. And that's what she said to me, word for word. word for, you re-up, and I'll disown you. So I did not re-up. I should have said that to him. <laughs> wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> I knew What's that answer already. Officer's candidate school. Okay. <laughs> and then when I, was, when I went to Afghanistan, mm -hmm. like eight or nine years ago, I swore up and down that I would never step foot off the place that I was at, that, uh, remember that, Ma? What did you swear? I swear, I swore that the place was like Fort Knox, and yeah, I was never going to, and I was never going <laughs> to, I was never going to, I was never going to go out of, tell you, Ma. I was never going to go out of the wire, and then like two weeks before I came back to the States, there was a, a front page article on it in a Staten Island advance. <laughs> <laughs> remember yeah. that? Do you yeah. remember that, Ma? I she found out that you, yeah. Oh. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah huh? that front, front, front page. <laughs> it was right. It was like right when Obama was uh, was inaugurated. Yeah. And it had me on some mountaintop in <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> and then my mother. Do you remember that, Ma? And your friend called. My, one of my friends. One of my mother's friends called. <laughs> said, "Oh, Vin Vincent's pictures on the front page of the Advance." <laughs> 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 so so I Good lied. Nail. If my, if, if, my, if my troops were going to be going, o going off the wire, so Yeah, but I think you joined the Marines because Tommy was in the Marines. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Probably, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Well, What's the age difference? I, mean, I apologize for that. A lot. A lot. No, like 13, lot. 13 Tommy, 14 years. About you to myself. Yeah. That damn Tommy didn't go in the Marines. <laughs> I remember these conversations. 
think Grandma and Aunt Dolly, <laughs> when it would just be the girls, the boys would be out doing their thing, they'd kibitz and they'd complain about what kids doing what and what kids doing that and how dare they, they know what they're putting their mothers through and I do remember those conversations. <laughs> Well, I did put my mother through a hell of a But I do, I I do really remember did. when your uncle was overseas that my mom had a, a map of Vietnam on her door and every day like the news would be on and this was 1968 at the height of the war and you know they'd have the casualty figures Walter Cronkite would be saying oh, yeah, you know 50 Americans were killed mm -hmm. today and my mother was all bent out of shape about it. And then mm. I even I vaguely even remember your mother being all ups, all upset every day. Yeah, you know, mom got a knock on the door one day. Yeah. I, it was the first time I was hurt, she got noticed that I had been killed, KIA, and um, they told me they had notified my mother that she that I was KIA, and uh, so I you know, insisted on a phone call, and I remember my mom crying, yeah, crying like a baby. On the phone, which oh. you heard from me, yeah. Uh, and it wasn't an officer, and I don't understand why it wasn't an that's officer. That's surprising. Yeah. They had, she had two um, staff sergeants knock on the door and say mm. I'd been KIA. And they told me in the neck, uh, I beg your pardon, in Dong Ha, in the um, hospital in Dong Ha, that my family had been advised I was dead and that I should get in touch with them. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at uh, one point, it is kind of understandable. Like, think about the time frame. Everybody's like mm -hmm. more important, like trying to fight this war where things mm -hmm. just fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. That could also be why those. That's people, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I have a gentleman who loved to tell a story about when they heard you were coming home, and he went downstairs, mm -hmm. took that ping pong table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he put together that sign. And Mr. Joseph came down. I, I remember when you went overseas, that the whole, well, not the whole family, I remember my mother, your mother, Hank, mm -hmm. I think my, my father, and I remember at least me and probably Jimmy, we went to the airport with you and put you on the plane. Are you talking about going to uh, Nam? Yeah. Uh, after 30 days, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember I, that. I vaguely... You know, I remember you like in your uniform or something, yeah. and but I was like five years old. Now I'll tell you a story of one Marine to another Marine, the being that we're burying our souls here. I came home to Hawaii because of Lisa. And I, were you were UA because you were supposed to go on R&R? &R? Because yeah. I had always heard that, mm -hmm. and, I, and I said to her, how could he go if he was on R&R, &R, mm -hmm. because it was only like three or four days or whatever, mm -hmm. how could you go from there mm -hmm. to New York? And then my mother said that you, you were gonna um, run away from the Marines, or yeah. go, you, mm -hmm. and you ran into some old veteran, That's true. and he said to go well, back. I didn't know you, know, you knew about he it. He said, you gotta do yeah. your duty and go back. I told my mom, my mom said, you know, uh, your aunt said, you don't wanna go back, we'll go to Canada. And I wasn't gonna put her in that spot. I said, no, I'm going back. But at the airport, I bumped into an old Navy guy. Uh, he was a, uh, I'm going to say, a chief. Uh, he was probably an E6 or an E7. And we had a few drinks together. And he told me about some things that happened in his life. And he told me I'd regret it if I didn't go back. And I did go back because of him. <laughs> now, <laughs> when you went back, weren't you UA? Yeah, I got off the side. And what did, they, what did they do to you? No, it was, you know, it really wasn't anything because we were short of personnel. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, uh, I honestly don't know what the punishment was, remember what the punishment was, but it was no, not significant because we... Had, How did you get flight back? Oh, I got, um, I went to L.A., went to Pendleton, and from, got a Mac from flight. New York? Yeah, right. I went to L.A. from New York. But didn't they check your orders and say, you know, you're U.S.? I flew civilian. Oh, okay. I flew civilian. And then when I got to Pendleton, uh, I took a MAC flight. And um, that's when you're U.A. Yes, sir, I'm reporting back. <laughs> well, at least you didn't went back. Yeah. Anyway, I got office hours, and it was no big deal. And I, re I say it was no big deal because there was no significant punishment. And... The reason there was no significant punishment is because we had had, again, we had been decimated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had been decimated. Mm -hmm. 
No, and I don't remember if that was shortly case. after that February. She was in basketball. Now you're March. Yeah, I don't remember if it was shortly after that. Or well, shortly you were only that. in country then for a couple months. Yeah. But would they allow you to take a R and R being well, that they junior? Didn't, they didn't know about it. I went to um, I went to Thailand, bought a civilian ticket. Thailand to, uh, nice. Yeah, bought a civilian ticket to Hawaii, and bought a civilian ticket to uh, New York. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was on the plane for nearly 30 hours. <laughs> I was on the plane for nearly 30 hours. But um, my mother had said uh, that she would pull up safe and go to Canada if I wanted to. And I was going to put them in that position. And I honestly didn't know what I was going to do when I went back uh, to uh, LaGuardia. It wasn't Newark, it was LaGuardia. Mm -hmm. And I bumped into um, uh, the sailor. And we had a long talk at the bar, because he knew I was you were. And it was obvious. <laughs> okay, here's uh, a question for you. Uh -huh. What was your thoughts the first time you got into a firefight? God save me. I got to take you. And this is for your were you, were you, okay? Were you scared or was it like oh, a, no. surreal, was uh, it a watched, surreal? Was it a surreal experience? In, yeah, we walked into a horseshoe ambush, so it was chaos. Uh, the platoon had walked into a horseshoe. And this is for you. Uh, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I really did. And I hear Grandma's voice telling me I'm going to be okay. All right? They were walking in mortars. We had broke the horseshoe, and we had taken cover and dug in. And they're walking in mortars on our, we're splintered. We're all over the place, okay? And they're walking in mortars on a couple of different positions. And honestly, God, and I heard Grandma tell me I was going to be okay. I heard Grandma tell me I was going to be okay. Were you scared? I was scared shitless. <laughs> I mean, but you were scared, but did you panic or did your training kick in? Oh, no, the training kicked in. Oh. I mean, that's what, the training's what saved us. I mean, those of us who survived that particular firefight, that's what saved us. And the Marine Corps is a difficult life to live, but the training is what keeps you alive in that kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. Was it, it came in instinct because... Yeah, there wasn't any thinking about it, it was just reaction. There wasn't any thinking about it, and um, yeah, the training is what saved us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was the first firefighter I was in. And honestly, God, I, I, grandma, I heard Grandma's voice tell me I'd be okay. Was she a role model for you? Grandma? Then you oh, I was very close to her. Did you panic yeah. at all when you were overseas? No. Mm -hmm. You never did? I was in, wasn't in any firefights. The closest thing that happened, there was a, an IED that blew up like across the street. Mm -hmm. Now the second and third time, was it easier or do you still think? No. It doesn't get easier. It depends on what side of the fight you're on. I mean, <coughs> you set the trap. Did you ever set any traps? You yeah, see them, set traps. See them yeah. walking in? Yeah, yeah. Um, long story short, if you're setting the trap, it's slow motion. Everything is taking place the way it's supposed to take place. If you're caught in the trap, Were you, it's were you gleeful? Big part. Were you gleeful saying, no. yeah, we're going to get these? Or it was just, no. this is my you job? Know, that's something that a lot of people talk about. And this is not necessarily. Or, or I'm saying retribution or no. whatever. Uh-uh. Where this is we just your job, me, you got to do it. Yeah, we, this was a job we had to do. And all the BS that I used to hear about taking trophies in, the year, in terms of years yeah, and that kind of thing, yeah, yeah. I never saw any of that take place. I never saw that happen. And we were in lots of firefights. We were in lots of firefights. Now, we were never in the South. We were always in the North. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were always fighting uh, regulars, uh, the NBA regulars. And we were never fighting the Kong or anything like that. So I never, I never saw any trophy taking. But yet guys who are Marines in the combat or in the group that I go to about the PTSD talk about there having been... They do? Yeah, and I and I've never I, honestly I never I've never anybody. heard I've never heard of any Marines yeah. doing anything like that. And uh, this now again, he was artillery. He wasn't necessarily. He well, was, was, he, was he an FO? Big part. Was he an FO? No. Oh. Uh, he was in the rear with the gear and all this, but he was in country, and they had a lot of. Rhymes. Big part. I, I love like, it how everything rhymes. Are you saying no? The rear and the gear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I never, I never met any personalities like that mm -hmm. uh, who would be willing to do something like that. I never, none of us were like that. No. We, we, we were well trained. We were mm -hmm. Marines. We were there to do a job, and we did our job. Mm -hmm. huh? And the guy who was next to you, you had to trust him implicitly. Uh, so, and did I ever tell you about the McAllister that joined us? 
I know you. I, I heard that there was a black McAllister. There was a black McAllister. But this guy was white, and he spelled oh. his name with one C, not two C. So the black McAllister spells his name. With so there's two C's. three McAllisters in the right. company. Right. No, the second, not in my company. The oh. second McAllister that you're talking about, I have come across my. my oh, entire oh, oh, okay. Time I got it. In terms of administration, okay. and records, in terms of the VA as well. Uh, they have mixed up prescriptions oh. on that belong to him versus belonging to me. Is and the first thing? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's Thomas McAllister, and the last four are the same, same thing, 5752. Now, the rest wow. of the social security number is. The, yeah, the rest of the person? social security. Did you ever meet this man? No, person? but I saw a picture. Oh, you he's black. should. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you go out to dinner one night. Like, there is a fundamental difference between the two. Um, a little DNA training. But the McAllister I'm talking about, yeah. the kind of guy that I'm sure you've encountered this, he gung ho. He couldn't wait to be in a firefight. And at the, time, at the time, I was squad leader. And I'm telling this, you know, I'm telling the rest of the. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to shut it off. Uh, Amory and Sorry. Amory. No, it was Amory. She like blinded us, right? Sorry, sorry. I'm trying to shut it off. <laughs> He was gung-ho. He couldn't wait to be in a firefight. Uh, he was locking up a lot of junk and all this nonsense. And so I told the squad, I told the fire team that I put him in, I told the leader of the fire team to put him in just to keep an eye on him. Well, we run into a warship, okay? And he's standing up on the ridge, just standing there as big as life. And so I took a 50, um, a 60 um, case of ammo and threw it at him. Knock him, <laughs> knock him down, knock him off the cliff. And, you know, he was a typical reaction in terms of what you would expect after that. I mean, he would fall like a baby in this kind of thing. Slap him upside the head in order to get him back to the reality. And uh, they, uh, he had a minor wound, and he never came back to the tomb. He never came back to the tomb, so I don't know. A lot of people like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you feel the first time you saw a dead American? Angry, scared, wishing to God it never happened to me. <laughs> there's, you know, there's no, there's no bullshit here about it. Uh, Sad. Hmm? Sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I never knew the guy's name. He had a, he had a second chest wound. I don't know why I'm talking about this. Uh, it's his, like Tom. It's like my mother. Your grandkids? <laughs> <laughs> he had a second chest wound, and we didn't know it. And the second chest wound is that you take an entry on one side of the body, and it penetrates the lungs, and it does go out the other side of the body. Right? If it does go out the side, other side of the body, it takes a very large exit hole. And the reason it's called a second chest wound is because you're trying to breathe, you know? and you can't breathe because lungs are collapsed. Right? And uh, we didn't know. He had a wound in his leg, and I'm attending to his leg, and I'm pumping him out to the uh, medevac, uh, to the, um, help me here, the AZ. Um, LZ. Thank you, LZ. And, Landing um, zone, that's where the helicopter's flying to get everybody to bring them out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm carrying him out, and he is wheezing and wheezing and wheezing, and I can't figure out what the hell's going on. Where was the corpsman? Hmm? Where was the corpsman? He had been hurt. Oh. And uh, so it was the rest of us who were in the uh, platoon who were taking care of everybody else. And we were trying to make cover and still take care of the people who were hurt. And we set up a uh, perimeter on the LZ. And we're waiting for the uh, choppers to come in. And he's still, you know, I, I can't tell what's, I can't find out what, and I finally, I decided, I just took my K bar and cut off his uh, black jacket and his. Um, um, fatigues. And he had a second chest wound. So we used a uh, um, um, sea rat they, plastic. Do they teach no, you the No, um, the basic. The poncho. Oh, poncho to put to plug yeah, it up. Yeah, right. So. The poncho. So we cut the poncho up, uh, wrapped it around him, blah, 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 blah. I never knew if he ever survived. And I was, I tried once to find out if he survived. And I only knew his first name. But he, did he make it out, out alive of the pickup yeah, by the Yeah, he was elsewhere? alive when he got on so, the chopper. Yeah, he was alive when he got on the chopper. More, nine times out of ten he made it then. Yeah. It ain't fun. 
And what meant, and I'll say this because I'm running off at the mouth now, I'll say this. If I hated anybody, I hated the politicians. Because good men were dying because they couldn't make up their minds. And it was so, so frustrating, so make you feel so abandoned. You know? All we even ever even, even then, you guys, young guys, 20 years old, realized that like you couldn't go. You got artillery from North Vietnam, mm -hmm. but you couldn't go into North we Vietnam. We couldn't, yeah. We used to... Um, I mean, you were right on the DMZ, right, right. by the trace. Right. My company used to uh, float from one side of the... from the... Um, Alpha 3 to the, the right. water. Right. And we, yeah, we used to float between the two. And any time, there was just certain parameters we could not pass. And there was no reason not to. And good men were dying because we weren't allowed to. And all they ever had to do was put the third on one side and the first on the other side. And we could have gone through to Hanoi in a week. Uh, because they were not well equipped. They were not prepared. They were simply... Who? The NBA. The NBA, the NBA were not well prepared. They weren't as prepared as we were. But, they weren't do, but do you think they were we committed? Were. Big but do you think they were committed to, do you think they were idealistic? Well, I'll tell you another story. All right. Another horseshoe, we get caught in. We break through. I've got my fire team spread out. I walk into a clearing. There's an NBA standing on the other side I of the clearing. Remember he told me about this years ago. And he looks at me, I look at him, and we turn around and go about our own business. Do you huh? ever feel guilty you didn't take him out? No. <laughs> do you ever no. think that maybe he was the one? He was not pointing anything at me. He was not. He was not. But but do you have, and I'm not criticizing you because I was never in that situation. But do you think maybe a week later he was setting the ambush for you and your guys, and he pulled no the flame more? No more so than a week later, I was setting an ambush for his guys. Hmm? There was no. There was no sense of animosity. There was no sense of I'm fighting for my home. There was no sense of I've got to protect my family. Do you, do you still remember his face? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one of the few things that I haven't blocked out. How far away were you? I'd say about 20 yards. Mm -hmm. About 20 yards. Mm -hmm. And it was a small little clearing. You know, there was uh, still there was a couple of banana trees, you know, you know small, uh, small fruit trees. And all that happy nonsense. And it just... Um, he was fighting to protect his home. He was fighting to protect his sure. country. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have any animosity toward me. Well, I mean, if we you looked look, at each other, he turned away, if, I if, turned away. Right, if you, if you look at it, we were the invaders. The same thing in Iraq. We invaded, I never we, understood. We, inv we invaded that country. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, for me, how could we call them insurgents mm -hmm. in Iraq when we were the ones that were yeah. toppling, toppling their government. Yeah, I agree, hundred ten percent. We've never had, in my lifetime, we've never had a justifiable reason to go to war. Korea. There are, hmm? Korea. Well, in my lifetime. Well, you were. Well, it was in Korea. Yes. Okay, it was in Korea. Um, you don't think Afghan? You don't. You don't think Afghanistan was the right? No, I no? Don't. no, I don't. I thought I chasing. I, go ahead. I thought that if there was a right war, instead of Iraq, Afghanistan was it. Until I went there mm -hmm. and saw the corruption. Yeah, uh, I knew nothing about the corruption, but the idea of being there to find uh, Osama. Osama bin Laden, bin Laden, and it just got into it just got into a cluster. Like we would. Yeah. I was more involved with reconstruction efforts, mm -hmm. and. There's a huge heroin poppy mm -hmm. growing area okay? that mm -hmm. the U.S. and NATO were originally trying to eradicate it. Mm -hmm. And then they said, no, we can't eradicate it because that's going to alienate the locals mm -hmm. because that's their cash crop. So that heroin that's made goes straight to Europe. Mm -hmm. so, Which is then and then, the and then yeah. the Taliban, they tax it. So they're making money on it, so it's just like an evil circle. Right, right. It, it, it's like the triangle for the rum to slaves yep. to mm -hmm. uh, honey, wasn't it? Honey? I think it was honey. Uh, yeah. Molasses. 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 Thank you. I was so, going to say so, sugar cane. Yeah. yeah. So, Ma, let's talk about another some a nice thing. Let's talk about Jimmy again. What? Let's talk about Jimmy.
Jimmy. Jim McAllister. You, t you know more about him. What do you mean? You were his nephew. You've known him much longer than I did. I wasn't with him all the time. I know, Ma, but you know, you know Jimmy when he was a little kid. What was he like? A good kid. Yeah. Kind. Yeah. And a big Helpful. Heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was a good kid. Was he a good bartender? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I never heard him. That was acquired skill. It was not something he was born well, with. Just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying that because I wanted on film about Jimmy, Jimmy's New Year's Eve uh, bartending at my mom's house. Now, what happened, Jimmy was, Hank and Annie were at the house, right? And Jimmy was bartending for New Year's Eve, right? I guess so. What do you mean you guess so? Vinny, I don't remember everything. Well, Ma, come on, Anne Marie and Michelle want to, want to hear about, you know, Jimmy getting drunk and throwing up. Yeah, like, what did we do? We <laughs> like, would he take, like, the half-empty ones and drink it? Yeah. And then all the neighbors would come I, back I bet that's what he did. Dad. And what did he do? He threw up all over the new carpet? You and him. No, not me and him. I was like three years old. So my dad threw up all over your new carpet? Bernie and, you, and Jimmy. No, Ber Ma, Bernie was only like about eight years old. They were drinking. Bernie was? With Jimmy. Eight and Jimmy threw up and what happened? Well, it was cleaned up and I never got the spot out. Okay. <laughs> And Jimmy, when he was passing out, he said, I am dead. <laughs> I, I, I do oh, remember drama. that because I was, in, I was in bed and my brother was in bed. You know, we had beds next to each other uh -huh. and Jimmy was really loaded and he was throwing up all over the place. And I remember my brother and myself were cracking up laughing. <laughs> and I remember the last thing that I hear was Jimmy saying, I'm dead. <laughs> right, Mom? Remember that? Partially. Yeah, okay. I don't remember everything you do. I, 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 I was barely a kid. So Vinny wants to hear about Uncle Johnny drinking in Grandma's basement. Huh. Vinny, <laughs> Vinny wants to hear about Uncle Johnny drink, Uncle Johnny being banished to Grandma's basement and eating bananas and drinking wine. Oh, they had a good time. Yeah? <laughs> and wh wh why was Grandma always used to throw the shoe at Uncle Johnny? Why? Didn't, why was Grandma throwing the shoe against, uh, at Uncle Johnny? Because he was naughty. Okay. And what about when Uncle Johnny, he would take his bike and ride all over Staten Island when he was a little kid? Well, he wasn't supposed to. He had a, he found a bike mm -hmm. at the dumps. And he fixed it up and he rode to South Beach one night from West Brighton and he stayed out all night how old was how he how old was he and grandma how, grandma how old was how old was he how old he was about 12 12 years old and he got such a beating from grandma that's right she had a metal spoon and was beating him up with it the next way he next week he did it again what <laughs> Did he get so caught what did again? Yeah, did he get caught? Sure he did. Grandma hit him. <laughs> With what? With a spoon. Again? I don't, and I don't know what had to happen after that. that she, yeah, Grandma, yeah, Grandma, that, was, that, Grandma, that, Grandma was a really shoe. good shot with the I show. I heard she was good with that shoe. <laughs> now, why was Uncle Johnny the favorite? He had a beautiful disposition. Yeah. Was he the baby? He... He was defined, he was self-destructive, but he had a beautiful disposition. He was very loving, very lovable, attentive. He was beautiful. He, was, he had a very good heart, and I never heard anything bad about him when I went out. Was Uncle Johnny a tough guy? My brothers were not tough guys but they knew how to defend themselves. Did you ever see Uncle Johnny or Uncle Patty or Uncle Tony get into a fight? No. Oh. Not even with each other? They never, they, they were not allowed to, to hit each other. I know, but you're not allowed, but you do it anyway. So like, was there anything like out in the backyard wrestling or nothing? Well, Johnny was younger than Patty and Tony. Uh-huh. 
He had his own friends. Okay. But you never saw Uncle Johnny or Uncle Patty get into a fight? Tell, tell us about uh, when Grandpa, when, it, you, when uh, Grandpa beat up the guy who was peeing in the backyard. I told him. Well, we want to hear it. Anna and me were making mud pies. We were playing in the backyard. And some black guy came in. I didn't see him, neither did Anna. But by, the guy came in the backyard and he started to pee in the backyard. Grandpa was upstairs. He came downstairs and hit the guy. And the guy was knocked out. With his fist? With his fist? Or you hit him with a bat or something? With his fist. Okay. And Grandpa called Uncle Patty. He's put him in the wheelbarrow and thrown him on Wayne Street. <laughs> and that's what he did. So you didn't call the cops? You just moved him yourself? <laughs> Took him where? Where was he dumped? Where did they put him? On the street in the wheelbarrow. Okay. <laughs> your grandparents the first generation or what did yeah they my grandma and grandpa they, they were born in Italy they were born in Italy yeah and their my parents father, came over no, no they they, they, they came over themselves grandma and gra my gra your great grandparents were born in Italy came to the United States they were from the same town but didn't know each other okay and they they met at a boarding house in St. George uh, and six weeks later they got married in like 1913 Grandma was 14, or great-grandma was 14, and grandpa was 23. Wow. 14? Yeah. She, she, she came over with her 15, family? Right? No, she came, her grandmother, your great-great-grandmother uh -huh. died in the cholera epidemic in like 1910 in Naples. Uh -huh. And apparently she was buried alive. I heard the story. You were saying that she, that they were talking to her through the window. Who was the one? Uh, was Al was saying that. Oh, okay. And I, my mother said the same thing that she was buried. Your gra your grandmother was buried alive, right? They put lime on him because I guess cholera was yes, so. Sure. They couldn't. They couldn't control. Yeah, they couldn't control it. And, and Naples had a huge cholera epidemic at the time, so they apparently supposedly buried her alive. She did uh, only 28 years old. And Dolly, did Grandpa ever speak to his father after he came to the United States for the last time? Ma, you listen to Vinny? Listen. I guess not. But See, every time he mentioned his mother, he'd start crying. Aww. But who, was it Grandpa's family that came over? Or Grandma's family that came over when Grandma shot them? Grandma's father was here. No, no, when Grandma, was that Grandma's family or Grandpa's family that Grandma shot? Grandpa's family. Grandpa's? Why did he shoot, why did she shoot them? You know, you, I, I don't feel like answering those damn questions all the over again. Anne Marie wants to hear it, Ma. <laughs> Thanks. No, she heard it. No, she didn't. <laughs> she didn't remember. Come so on. Whatever, what happened to, whatever happened to Grandma's mother, uh, father? We know her mother died of cholera. What happened to her father? My grandmother died of cholera. But what about your what? grandfather? No, my grandfather wasn't, he, he didn't die of cholera. That was my mother's, my father's mother and father. My mother's mother died of cholera. Right, and what happened to your, what happened to grandma's father? How do I know? But I didn't, he, didn't he come to the United States? How did Grandma come to the United States? Did she come alone or with her father? She came by herself. At but 14? Her, fourth, her father was here. Her father was here. Her father called for her. Her yeah. father sent for her. Right. Okay. And Dolly, at that point in time, how long was the voyage from Europe to here? How long, how long did it take to sail from uh, Italy to here? A month. Wow. 14 years. And uh, they were all, it was all in steerage, probably. It wasn't like first class. Yeah, yeah. all right, steerage. Mm -hmm. Look, My grandfather came right. three times. All right, now i got to make a confession. you got to turn oh, yeah. off the camera. You can turn back on after they tell you. Yeah, wait, I wait. broke yeah. the toilet bowl. 
Not even good. Toilet bowl, your toilet paper roll. Yeah. Oh, bar. I don't care. Yeah, I broke the bar. I don't know how it broke, but the bar? Yeah, the bar. Oh, that's nothing. 